So the second part of the lesson today, we're going to continue using complete square, and again, we're going to use it for something a little bit different. So note that this is the graph here of y equals x squared plus 4x takes 7. And if we wanted to find out the x-intercepts of that, what I hope your first thought would be is, well, let's attempt to factorise it and then solve it via the null factor law to get these x-intercepts. Okay, so you would go, all right, 7, 1, x, x. And there's no way from this we are going to be able to make positive 4. So hopefully you notice that the, you are uh, unable to factorise using the techniques we've covered so far. So if you are unable to factorise using grouping or the cross method, it does not necessarily mean there is no x-intercepts. And it's clear this, this does have x-intercepts. So what we'll do, um, girls, is we'll just complete the square to find the turning point of this graph. So fence that off, and we've got y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2 squared, take 4, take 7. That's y equals x plus 2 all squared, take 11. Right, so the turning point is negative 2, negative 11, and that looks around about right. Now, what are the x-intercepts? Well, as we have done with linear and all the functions that we've done this year, we're going to note here that the x-intercepts produced um, solving uh, when y is equal to 0. Okay, so over here I've done it on the calculator and it seems to suggest it's got two x-intercepts, one at negative root 11 take 2 and one at positive root 11 take 2. Let's just mark them in. Now which one's which? So this one here is negative root 11, which is roughly negative 3 point something. Take away 2, that's roughly negative 5 point something. So that's going to be that one there. So it's negative root 11 take 2 comma 0. And this one here is root 11 take 2 comma 0. All right, so that's via the calculator. So I've solved the I've solved that on the calculator, and it's told us the x-intercepts when y is equal to 0. We can actually do that using uh, the turning point form. So what we're going to do is say x int when y is equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to go 0 equals x plus 2 all squared take 11. And remember what we're going to do um, at this point is just use the inverse operation. So we're going to say that 11, I'm going to add 11 to both sides, equals x plus 2 all squared. Now I'm going to square root both sides, noting that what this will produce is plus or minus root 11. So that's going to be plus or minus root 11 equals x plus 2. And then I'm going to say that x is equal to plus or minus root 11, take 2. Now, do you notice what that is? That's just that there. Okay, so once we've got it in turning point form, we can actually continue past turning point form and actually let the left or the right-hand side, depending on where uh, y is, equal to 0, and go ahead and solve using inverse operations. So we can complete that sketch um, above there. We've got the turning point. We've got the x-intercepts. Let's just grab the y-intercept which occurs when x is equal to 0, and that's going to be at negative 7, so 0, comma, negative 7. Right, and we've got all the key features there. Anything that we could do with linear functions, x-intercepts and y-intercepts, we can do with parabolas when the x-intercepts are um, there. And we've got the added um, thing that we have to do with parabolas, which is to uh, plot the, the turning point as well. Okay, so we can do this with all functions. So we've got two more that we're going to do here, three more rather, and then we're going to practice some more problems here. So let's just try these ones here. So um, let's try this again. All right, so state the turning point, the x-intercepts where appropriate for the following, labeling the graph where one is provided. So let's get the turning point for this thing. Y equals, so fence that off, x squared plus 6x plus Halve it, square it, add it, take it away. Rewrite that as a perfect square. And note that the turning point is negative 3, comma, 6. All right, so let's graph it. 
No, it doesn't say to, but let's just do it anyway. Okay, so here. We'll pop negative three there and six there, noting that the y intercept is 15. So six, 12, 18, 15, somewhere here. So zero, 15, and we're gonna have a mirror image of that over here, turning point there. So you notice here that when I draw this parabola, it's not going to have any x-intercepts. Okay, so negative three comma six. Now, why did I do this if this is the method that we're going to obtain x-intercepts? Well, what students do is they fall in love with the algebra. Okay, and so what you'll do is a lot of girls like to do all of the algebra to get all of the points and then sketch the function right at the end. And what I highly recommend is that you sketch on the run. So you sketch whatever you can when you get it. Okay, now what you'll notice now is that there's no sense actually getting the x-intercepts, okay? But what if I didn't see this graph here and I just said, all right, I've got the turning point, I've got the y-intercept, now I'm gonna get the x-intercept and then I'm gonna sketch it at the end. All right, so let's actually try and get the x-intercepts from this. So I'm gonna say that the x-int when y is equal to zero. So we're gonna go x plus three all squared plus six, what I'm going to do is subtract 6 from both sides. Now I'm going to root both sides and here lies the problem. Okay, so what happens here is a lot of students even proceed further than this and say that x is going to equal plus or minus negative root 6, or root six take 3. Okay, now the problem is that you, in math methods anyway, I'm not allowed to square root a negative number, it doesn't exist. I'm just gonna show you what I mean there. So shift root negative six, and it says not real in the calculator. So what's this telling you? Okay, what's this telling you when you try and root the negative six? It's basically saying that this doesn't exist, okay? Or algebraically here, the x-intercepts don't exist, which seems to match up with the graph that says I've got no x-intercepts. So what this example is there for really is to just emphasize the fact that you don't have to, um, you don't have to find the x-intercepts every time, especially if you can see from the graph that you've sketched that you don't need to. All right, so let's do this one here. So it's suggesting that there is indeed x-intercepts. So what we'll do is we'll run the complete the square process to get the turning point. And from the turning point form, we're going to use inverse operations to get those x-intercepts. So we've got y equals x squared, take 3x, um, halve it, square it, add it, 3 on 2 squared, uh, take away 9 on 4, take away 4 on 4, which is 1. y equals x, take 3 on 2, all squared, take 13 on four, a TP is three on two, negative 13 on four, which seems to be correct according to this graph here. So there's three on two, negative 13 on four. Okay, so let's grab these x-intercepts. So we're gonna note that x int when y is equal to zero, zero equals x take three on two, all squared take 13 on 4. Right, let's use some inverse operations. 13 on 4 equals x take 3 on 2 all squared. Right, what we're going to do is root both sides now. So I'm going to root that side, root that side, noting that the answer will be plus or minus. All right, so that's going to be root 13, so plus or minus root 13 on 2. So I'm going to root the 13 and root the 2, uh, root the 4, which is 2, equals x take 3 on 2. Then I'm going to note that x is equal to plus or minus root 13 on 2 plus 3 on 2. Right, so now we've got to label our x-intercepts. Okay, so one of them is going to be x is equal to plus root 13 on 2 
plus 3 on 2. So that's going to be the bigger one. That's that one there. So let's label it. It's not a pretty one. It's a pretty ugly x-intercept. Root 13 on 2 plus 3 on 2 comma 0. That's that one there. And this one over here is going to be the negative version of that, which is negative root 13 on 2 plus 3 on 2 comma 0. Okay, so that's that x-intercept there. Okay, so again, we couldn't get those x-intercepts from using the cross method factorize solve by the null factor law. So we have to go to plan B on this one here and use this technique to do it. Let's go one more sketch. And this is absolutely as nasty as it gets, girls. Okay, this is absolutely filthy. All right, so absolutely hard as it gets. Let's settle in and have a look at this. All right, so first rule with complete the square, you can't complete the square when there is a coefficient other than one. So what we're going to do is yank the negative two out and say that we've got x squared. Okay, now, how can I pull out negative two when it's not a factor? Well, hmm, I can. What I'm gonna do is rewrite this as seven x on two. Okay, now note then that that's gonna be negative two multiplied by positive seven x on two, which is going to be negative 14 x on two, which is the same as negative seven. So whenever you pull it out, all you do is you divide by the number that you're pulling out, okay? Now we're gonna do it with this one as well. See if you can work out what that's going to be. Okay, and if you haven't noticed, it's gonna be negative five on two. Because negative times a negative is a positive. Two times five is 10, 10 on two is equal to five. So there it is there. Now inside that, what we're going to do is complete the square on that. So I told you it's nasty. This is very, very nasty. So brackets, x squared plus 7x on 2. Now what we do is we have to halve 7x on 2. Okay, so 7 on 2 divided by 2 is the same as 7 on 2 times a half, which is 7 on 4. Now we're going to add it and square it. Now we've got to subtract it, which is 49 on 16. And we've got to take away this as well, which if we write it on 16, is going to be times 8 times 8, which is 40 on 16. Okay, let's rewrite it. Negative 2, x plus 7 on 4, all squared, take away 89 on 16. Okay, what's the turning point? Negative 7 on 4 negative 89 on 16. Now that seems rather bizarre because it seems like that value is up high, way up high. Okay, and it's suggesting that the turning point should be down at negative 89 on 16. Now what's happened here? Well, it's the same thing as before. That negative two needs to be multiplied back through to work this one out. So that is not the turning point. We're not ready to state the turning point yet. So we're gonna go negative two multiplied by this is negative two, x plus seven on four, all squared. Now we're gonna do negative multiplied by that, which gives us the positive. Ah, that's good, that's what we want. Okay, and it's gonna be two lots of 89 on 16, but because I'm multiplying by two, this is gonna be two on 16, which is actually just going to be 89 on eight. Now, how does that work? I'm going to do two lots of, so two times 89 on 16. Now I can do that and multiply it and then divide both sides by two, or I can cancel that down to write it as 89 on eight straight away. That's a much more efficient way of doing it. Okay, now we're ready to declare the turning point. It's at negative seven on four, 89 on eight. There it is there. Y-intercept, let's do that, 0, 0,5, constant there. Okay, now we need the x-intercepts. Oh, tough question, very tough question. Okay, so we need a bit more space. All right, so what we're gonna do is operate on this, but I'm gonna pull it back one line and I'm gonna operate on that, all right? So, why? I'll show you in a sec. So we're going to go 0 equals negative 2 
x plus 7 on 4 all squared take 89 on 16. Now why did I do that? Because x int when y is equal to 0. So I've got to let y equal 0. Now I'm going to solve. Now here's a pretty cool move. All right, what I'm going to do first of all is rewrite it as this. All right, what happened? Negative two disappears. Not really. What I've done is actually divide both sides by negative two. Okay, so I divide this side by negative two and this side by negative two. Okay, and in methods, I'll refer to this as just dumping it. I dump the negative two because I can just simply divide through by it and zero divided by negative two is still zero. Now, why didn't I do it on this line here? Because when I divide by negative two, I've got to divide the left side that will still cancel out, but I've also got to divide this single term, okay? So this one here has got to be divided by negative two as well. And it's just a little bit more clumsy to do it on that line here. Here, I can just dump it straight away. All right, so now I'm gonna go 89 on 16 equals x plus seven on four squared. So I'm just doing that by inverse operations. Now I'm gonna root both sides, which is plus or minus. Now I'm going to write this as plus or minus root 89 over square root of 16 is 4 equals x plus 7 on 4. x is equal to, I'm going to subtract 7 on 4 from both sides, plus or minus root 89 on 4, take away 7 on 4. So pretty ugly x-intercepts, but that's the way it goes. So this is going to be the positive one, root 89 on four, take seven on four, comma zero. So that's the higher one. And the lower one is going to be negative root 89 on four, take seven on four, comma zero. All right, so there is our x-intercepts, y-intercept and turning points. All right, so that is extremely difficult, that last problem. Okay, again, I could ask that even in a year 12 methods class, Half my class to two thirds of my class, I think will mess that one up somewhere. So if you're struggling with that one as well, good time to get that process sorted. All right, so further practice then on this skill will involve you sketching these graphs here, but including x-intercepts, y-intercepts and turning points this time around.